Well, uh, working with Phil is very difficult because uh, I guess he's a perfectionist, so he likes to spend a lot of time redoing things and re-listening, and it's very time-consuming. It becomes very hard for a... I mean, rock and roll's got to be spontaneous and done a little faster. I like um, beauty to be instant, you know, and not to be labored over, and I don't like music to be a hustle. You know, I think we can adequately go into a studio and, and do it and not just be frustrated. And Phil seemed to be frustrated with us. I think he's frustrated with himself, really. He you wasn't um, the most friendly guy I've ever met. He tried to be friends, but then he would had a gun on him and he may, wouldn't let me out of his house for a couple days and you know he wouldn't let and then if he said if you want to play his pinball machine he'd let you play it for a minute and then he'd say okay everybody to another room and i never met anyone like him and i hope i you know now he's just too difficult to work with and it's too costly and time consuming and uh in the 1980s you know you can't spend i mean uh the opening chord to a song of rock and roll high school he spent 12 hours sitting there listening to that same chord over and over again. I mean, it's just not worth it. And nobody, nobody else could hear the difference. The chord came out sounding okay, but 12 hours worth ain't really worth it, you know? You just go crazy. You, you, we would be as crazy as him if uh, we worked in a, with, with him. Times have changed, and um, most producers from the mid-60s haven't really grown with the changes. They're not, they're not able to do what producers now can do. It's a new modern sound, and he doesn't have it. No. His, his time's passed. <laughs> we wanted to work with Phil because of, I mean, the guy is a legend, and we uh, thought it would be a very good idea to work with a legend, and uh, you never know when it is be his last project. And... Uh, Plus, we didn't really know how difficult it is to work with the guy before we, we stepped into it. We found out. You know, like when, when before I wanted to work with him 100%, and uh, I, w I was gung-ho for the project, but he came off differently. He seemed more positive and more able. And when I got into the studio, I found him to be like a helpless little boy or something, like a very helpless person. He didn't know what to do. And that just stifles creativity when you just hang around in agony and frustration and, and stomp your foot and say, oh, what are we going to do and all? You know, that doesn't bring out anything in anybody. I guess faced with the project, he was very enthused. And then when she gets to the, that all of a sudden now it's the time, I guess then he must get a bit nervous about that all of a sudden it's getting near the time where he has to put out a project, which is going to be criticized. He seemed like so a man. Then, you know, then it becomes very hard. It gets harder for him harder and harder for him to finish the project from the time of pre-production. He seemed like a man walking his last mile doing our record, you know, that grim. <laughs>